What's up guys? It's Chris. Welcome back to VHB. So story time today. This is the kind of shit that I excel at because it's just me talking about something that I've done already. So it's great. Um, but at the same time too, why have I not done this yet? And it's been like 48 hours, I think, since I've been back. <clears throat> or if it's not been 48 hours, it feels like it. Well, because there's a lot of shit to talk about. There's a lot of stuff to digest. It was um, it was a, a very uh, mentally high-paced, fast couple days for me. Uh, learned a whole bunch of new things, um, and it's just uh, this just trip uh, turned out to be like super fucking important. Like Maryland each day was important for its thing for me to like to spread my wings the first time and get out and. <laughs> <laughs> and experience the broader car world but um this trip was so important as a fact of whether i'm gonna be really doing this again long term or not this was this trip was gonna set up uh, uh confirm and set up sema for me also um you know how or if i'm gonna be continuing to do this in the future because i like i said i learned from maryland maryland was a little bit of a sloppy mess because i just fucking went even though i had planned it months out you know planning for me is not like details like this hotel this place in this time with this people you know I, that's kind of like uh, female type planning and i'm not that good at it which is why i have a wife <laughs> so uh yeah and i was running solo so it was kind of like my planning was like i'm buying a plane ticket and i'm going there what are you gonna do when you get there i don't know <laughs> that, that kind of shit just figured out what happened what happens when we get there it's that's why it's kind of hard to, it was kind of hard for me to make plans to do anything because i just I didn't know how things were going to play, play out. I just figured I need to be in the situation and let things happen as they happen. And like, uh, so one of the things I mentioned pre H day and back when I bought the ticket originally was like, um, going and hanging out with Brian. But as the time started to get closer to H day, I realized that this could potentially be an issue. Why? Because 100% the main reason why I'm going there is because Jeff and Jesse and, um, 120% goes towards Jeff because I was just going to wait for SEMA to meet Jesse and, um, and Jeff, you know, just to come back out, get Jess, Jesse's barbecue. I'm like, all right, you know, and I'm super fucking happy I did. Uh, one, because, uh, Jeff doesn't really travel that much. It turns out, uh, I think, uh, he was saying the Maryland H day thing for him is not like a regular thing. Uh, and talking to his wife who handles, um, a lot of the phone calls, all the customer stuff, all the customer relations, um, is, you know, she's saying the same thing too. Like it's, it's hard to be away from the shop and be away from the business because of course, you know, you're taking time away from your business. You're taking time away from, uh, you're taking away from money earned and then to be out anywhere you're spending money. So you're spending money and you're not bringing money in. That's not a good thing. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It's never a good thing. Right. Um, also another thing to quickly throw out that, you know, about, I was I seen somebody post a meme that uh, oh people hoarding money I'm like it's you know rich people hoarding money I'm like yeah rich people have rich fucking expenses like the more money you make the bigger your expenses get so don't fucking think that somebody who makes a lot of money is just sitting on that money comfortably right now they may be more comfortable than other people I mean but I'm I finally reached the point this year where I'm pretty fucking good with comfortable with being comfortable and doing pretty much whatever I want within reason with just having a couple thousand dollars in the bank you know so. That's not any by by any means a lot of money, but anyways, same thing. Like I said, my my expenses are hundreds to thousands of dollars versus somebody who owns a business who's thousands to tens of thousands of dollars in expenses. Um, yeah. So that another thing is too, like for those of you guys who didn't know, uh, CSS had their car out and they uh, that one event and they hit a wall. So um, that's you know it's you know I I can imagine smashing into a wall with the race car you just spent a fuck ton of money to build would be you know a downer for motivation. And of course, on expenses too. So for you know, if those of you who are tracking, uh, if you're looking at him parting out a car, that's that's the CSS car. That's his race car that he's uh, selling parts off of. So hop on that if you see something you want, because you know it's premium parts. And um, okay, so see here, here we go. Like this has the potential for, to run a long time. This video, if I haven't already said that, I'm saying it now. And uh, so I'm trying to keep it a little bit structured. I'm gonna just try and go through like what happened step by step, so that way I can expand on it as I talk about the time. And then at the end of it, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this back here. All right, so um, uh, I flew up. You know, the, my biggest concern making the trip up there was was a rental car issue because like if you look on websites, and my one time experience with a rental car was years and years ago. Uh, when I was in El Paso, I tried to get a rental car and they wouldn't let me because I didn't have a major credit card. Now, I'm going to be hopping back into the major credit card scene here pretty soon just because of the fact that credit card utilization is important for credit. So I'm going to be starting to do that again. Uh, I've squashed all my debt down to like two debts. That are, I mean, they're not just open, they're at collections. 
So, yes, we'll do that. But I'm not ready to do that just yet. And um, I wasn't going to be ready in time for this trip. So I was very nervous that getting a rental car was going to be expensive. And the the event was like 70-some miles away or 50 or 60 miles. Anyway, it's like an hour drive away from the airport. And I'm not wanting to repeat the Uber experience I did in Maryland because that was what really kind of fucked up that trip for me. It could have been better if I'd have had my own transportation and I didn't. But anyway, so um, I get to the airport, you know, take a shuttle across to the rental car area, talk to the guy. He's like, I don't know, he's like, oh, you don't have a major card? I was like, well, like, before we get started here, I don't have a credit card, man. I got a debit card. And he was like, okay, okay. He says, you got a second form of ID? I'm like, what, like my name and picture? I was like, nah, man, I've got like a business card at best. It's like, you know, I have an old business card from Ryder, <laughs> but I don't have anything, uh, I don't have a second picture ID. <sighs> And he's like, oh, no. I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go, man. Here we're about to start it. The only good thing is there's like a million rental car kiosks. I was, I was pretty sure yeah, one of the motherfuckers is going to give me something. Even if I got to give a hand job under the table, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm getting a fucking rental car. So uh, I'm talking to the guy, and he's like, well, I'm going to need a deposit from you. I'm like, okay. He goes, and right now, supply and demand is in high need, so I'm going to give you a rental car quote, man. It's going to be kind of expensive, and it's up to you. You're going to tell me whether you're going to take it or leave it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, and I'm thinking in my head, like, dude, there's, I don't really think of a number that you can throw out unless it's like over a thousand dollars that I'm gonna tell, you, I'm gonna say no to. So he's like, crunch numbers, crunch numbers, crunch numbers. He's like, two eighty something. I'm like, yeah, done, give it to me. <laughs> and he's like, you want, do you want the toll pass? You know, twenty dollars, or you gotta get cash. And it turns out there's only one toll that I went through, so I probably could have only spent two dollars and been straight. But I was like, yeah, twenty dollars, take it, dude. I didn't give a fuck, you know. Plus. It's whatever. I don't want to stop, so I'll pay the extra money, right? He's like, so three fifteen is your total, and the deposit was like two hundred dollars. So I'm like, yeah, take it, whatever. Give me the fucking keys. Um, so the rental car I had was that uh, was pretty cool. It was a Toyota i8, no balls. It was a ballless car, but this motherfucker, bro, gets like forty miles to the gallon. Like the gas mileage was so goddamn good on it that I was looking at the gas gauge thinking it might be broken. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on? The gas has not moved. I just drove an hour. Cruising like 85 miles an hour, the gas did not move. The needle didn't move. So then drive from after the event to, to a restaurant that was 25 minutes away, needle didn't move. To Jeff's house, to the hotel, I lost finally one tick mark. And uh, then on the way back to the, uh, the airport, I did burn up a, a quarter tank because I was mushing the fuck out of the pedal. <sighs> The, the gas pedal was not the gas pedal, it was the smash pedal, and I was fucking, I was mashing on it, because I didn't anticipate how heavy traffic was going to be on a Sunday, going back to the airport, and um, on top of that shit, like, uh, I thought I was an hour behind schedule, turns out I wasn't, but it was all for the better anyway, so I was mashing it to cut through traffic, and shit. Not, not recklessly, I wasn't fast and furious up in this bitch, but I was going at a high rate of speed whenever it was possible, that was safe, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Turns out, like, you know, I get to the gas station, I can't, it won't read my fucking debit card, so I had to go prepay. I'm like, well, prepay fucking sucks dick. I have to have this as a full tank, and I don't want to be going back and forth to either get change or to, to put more gas in the damn car. So I was like, whatever. I was like, just put $10 in the fucking car, man. Is it a quarter of low, 40 miles to the gallon? I'm trying to figure out how much this tank would hold without Googling it. And so I just put $10, and I went back, and I pumped the gas. $10, car was fucking full. So I put m several hundred miles in that car. Several hundred miles in that car, put ten dollars in that bitch to fill it up. That's amazing. It kind of makes me want to go treat it in the CHR until I got home and drove the CHR again. I love my car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to bullshit this time coming from the airport. I, uh, you know, two trips this year and both times getting frustrated with my wife being slow as shit. So I just doesn't get out of the driver's seat. I'm driving out of this bitch and. Yeah, so I'm glad I did that. It was good. <laughs> it was a reminder of appreciation of my car because the CHR I consider super slow because it is. It's a four cylinder SUV, but it's way more responsive than the 40 mile uh, an hour or 40, 40 mile per gallon economy car. So, um, okay, so get to, the, get to the event. You know, like I said, an hour drive from the airport, a nice leisurely experience, everything. You know, Boston's a nice little, you could, you could feel that the city's old. Like, and it's also a little bit of a pain in the ass to navigate very narrow streets without street dividers and people who like to drive on both sides of the same fucking lane. It was a little awkward for me. And uh, there's that. And then, you know, driving through the New Hampshire slash uh, Massachusetts countryside was also nice. I'm very much looking forward to my return trips. And as far as return trips to to that New England area, I plan, I'm planning on at least two more. 
uh, one, I'm going to go up there against Solo. Now, whether it's going to be a race event or not, I don't know. Uh, I, somebody did mention like Honda Fest, and I, I searched it real quick on Facebook, and it seems like that is July 7th. That is too soon for me to take another trip again. Not so much because of money, but just because of the fact that my wife would be upset about it. And like I've just flown twice in the past two weeks, right? And I flew earlier this year. And um, I, I'm being the fact that I'm flying alone. It usually it's a, it's a and like I'm not paying for first class. You know I probably should after these trips. Um, it's kind of a gamble, like where who I'm gonna be stuck with or whatnot, and the flights can potentially be really uncomfortable. So going up there next month after <clears throat> after I promised that I'm not going anywhere until August would be um, would be a hassle. So and anyway. Gonna go up there and chill with Brian, and then the next time after that will be, uh, I guess for IFO or 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 Honda Day, whichever one comes first. Excuse me. <clears throat> hmm. I don't know. I, the second trip has to be that one's gonna has to be it for an event because I want to make sure everybody's out there again. I'll, I'm gonna take the family to meet Jeff and his family and Jesse and his family if Jesse happens to be at whichever event that is I'm gonna be going to. Now, I'm not now at this point. I'm no longer stressing having everybody in the same place, you know, because I've now that I've met everybody and I'm comfortable with everybody. I can go to whichever group. It's it's fine. I can go out and hang out with just Jeff and his peoples and his family, or I can go out with Jesse and his people and his family. And either one is completely fine now at this point. Which was, like I said, is the most important part of this trip, uh, which is how things are going to be. Hopefully, you know. Everything was smooth and, and all that stuff. Uh, and I know Jess, Jeff, when I spoke to him last time, was completely open and cool and laid back. And now I got the full package. I got to spend the entire day floating around him and Jesse and, you know, and then afterwards uh, with the family. So <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, I think, <laughs> is probably something along the lines of what I will eventually become. Really high energy, you know, kind of like bouncing around type of shit. Very happy guy. Uh, just, just a very great, and fun person to be around. The same thing with Jesse. Jesse's a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, a lower spoken, but man, when he hits you with something, it's it's a heavy hit. It's funny as fuck. Jesse's uh, extremely funny. Uh, both wives are awesome. They're both uh, awesome women, and perfect for support. You know, it's uh, what I was saying the other day, man. Like on Instagram, it's 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 not often that you meet so many great people. And when I was talking about great people, I'm not just talking about people in the scene. I'm talking about like these guys and their family. Um, I was a little, you know, like I've mentioned a bunch of times that I don't do well with other people's kids, you know. Uh, there's only one person ever who I've met who I like his kids. He's got three kids. I like two of them. The third one is spoiled. He's an asshole. And I don't like that kid too much. I mean, but I'm sure maybe it'll change when he gets older. But as a child, as a smaller child, he's a dickhead. And the parents do nothing to correct him. It, it blows my mind. It drives me nuts. And I was a little worried that I was going to be dealing with spoiled kids out there. Now, I didn't think there was going to be a problem or anything I didn't because I'm not out there for children. But, you know, being in the, situ in the situation where I'm going to be around people all day, I thought I was expecting some snot-nosed spoiled kids, and they weren't. They are all cool, man. All the kids were cool. The only the only time there was an attitude from any of the kids was um, Jesse's middle daughter. Uh, you know, but she was – it was 100% the same way my daughter would be in, in the situation. They're coming back from Portugal, and she's tired, the jet lag, and dealing with it. It's just hot outside, even though we're under the tent. And she's trying to sleep in a fold-up chair. You know, she's just kind of grumpy, didn't want to talk, making weird noises. <laughs> But when she woke up, smiles, happy kid, talkative, great. And um, Jeff's kids the same way. You know, Jeff's, uh, Jeff's kids are older. I think uh, Jeff's youngest is the same age as Jesse's middle child. And uh, great kid, you know. And uh, also the sons are awesome too. They're talkative, you know, and not boring. They don't. It doesn't seem like talking to kids, talking to these guys. And it's just a... Uh, so, and then, of course, meeting extended family, you know, of, of Jeff's, you know, his friends that were there that, you know, his very close friends that, are, that have been like family. It was great. It was just, it was great, like, from, you know, Jesse right away brought me into the booth and right away just uh, made to feel like part of, part of the company. Like, you know, like I'd always been there and it was, that's cool, man. And that's the way I try to present myself to other people when I meet people, like, especially like if you're watching this shit, been watching for a long time, you know, uh, was it, a, I've mentioned, I think I mentioned before that, or like Irvin's wife. You know, meeting her, nice to meet you. And it's like, she's like, oh, I feel like I already know you because I've heard you talk so much in here. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that's the way it is. And um, so um, one of the guys I met, one of the first people I met was it was Derek. Uh, Derek, if you're watching this dude, uh, throw me a fucking if you're. I don't know if you're all following me already on Instagram or whatnot, but if you are, 
hit me up with a DM and I'll give you a follow back. You, know, you seem like a really cool person, man. You had a group of people that you're out there chilling with too. So that means you're out there, you know, or at least involved in the crowd that's out there getting shit done. And that'd be cool to just follow along and see what's going on. Also, Maurice, uh, we're, well, we're already friends on Facebook and whatnot. So I got to meet him. And um, uh, Luke also. Luke, if you're watching or if not watching, I'll just get you later. I'll talk to you. But uh, Luke, Luke has one of my old shirts, you know. <laughs> One of my old shirts from back in the day, and he bought a really big one. And it looks, it looks like a goddamn dress on him. And um, I know I'm a long ways off from prioritizing having my own like merchandise. I will eventually get to that point. It's not a priority right now, and it's just you know people the the customers aren't there, people buying aren't there. So I'm not gonna you know keep going out and spending money on buying shirts just to have them sitting around the house. So uh, eventually, when I get back into making shirts, Luke, you get a free one, man. I'm going to give you an updated one that fits you properly. So <laughs> that's awesome, right? Um, so yeah, you know, not not only just me out there meeting the people that are in the race world, but also meeting the people who watch the channel. Like I know the channel is still small. I'm going to be saying this for a long time, probably. <laughs> But um, it doesn't mean that, uh, uh, but this, I think this thing is to say is that even though I'm small, there's a lot of people that have been here from the beginning that have watched from the beginning and I'd like to talk to. And I, I've also said before a bunch of times, I'm much easier to talk to in person than I am on DMs because texting is boring. All right, so um, first day was kind of slow. It wasn't super, you know, the event wasn't super eventful. And because I got there kind of late in the afternoon, I didn't decide to leave the booth. I just stayed where I was at. I got there around like 1.30. And everything starts to wind down around 5. Now, the shit doesn't officially end at 5, but everybody starts to wind down around 5 o'clock. And I think it's because that's usually around the time the races wrap up. And this time it seemed to wrap up around 3 o'clock because I think there was only 9 people that were racing uh, compared to Maryland H Day, which I, think was, was, I heard was 21. And um, later on talking to Monday, he was talking about the, the weather change is like, well, a big part of the reason why there was le less people out there. And also the fact that a lot of people come from Florida to race, which I didn't know that Florida had such a big group that was going up there. And um, now we're, they were, you know, in New Hampshire, not Maryland, you know, Maryland being an 18 hour drive and then, you know, 20 plus for New Hampshire. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And I'm talking to him. I'm like, yeah, I know. He's like, I got family in West Virginia. It's an 18 hour drive from, from Miami to uh, Huntington. So I, I know how that drive is. And I, I made it several times in the last couple of years. It sucks dick. So, uh, no surprise that uh, teams of guys with dragging cars on trailers aren't trying to run up there because yeah that's um i remember from when i was a little kid going from huntington west virginia to new york city and it was like an almost eight hour drive i want to say if memory serves me correctly so and this place is even further north so that's yeah, a long drive anyway so first day kind of winds down uh, we all go out to eat at chief walk <laughs> i thought it was, <laughs> that was a little funny joke but anyway go out to eat and, um, and i got treated thank you very much for that guys and um uh and, and that's and that's pretty much the, the the feel the whole time man like uh i can't you know i feel awkward when i'm not busting out my wallet you know to cover myself i don't ever want people to get the wrong idea of thinking me that i'm just trying here to go for a free ride that's not the case at all uh, i'm just very much happy to be included and be in the company and like and be treated like i'm not an invisible thing it's it's it was a great experience and it was great to you know talk to everybody and you always hear like more stories like, there was a story that I, that I got from Jesse that I got the, uh, about Trom, right? Eh, there we go. About these guys, or about, oh, about this guy, Barry, the guy who made this uh, made this company. Um, I spoke about it a while back. Like, when I made Trom Pistons, I made a video that probably kind of flew under the radar. I think that nobody really talks about the company on YouTube too much. And I think that that just wasn't a popular video of mine. So it doesn't really get, you know, it hasn't really got a lot of views. But uh, I kind of, I, the, the original story I got from Jesse was kind of like the light version of the story. And then I got the full details of it um, while I was there. And I might even talk about that separately. I'm not 100% sure. Because it, it is a neat story. And um, now this dude's on the come up like hardcore, man. So anyway, so it's that's there's just that. And um, and uh, like stories like that that I, you know, I got to hear the full version of. Because when, you, when you're sitting and you know, facing somebody and talking, it's easier to get you know, have more conversation, more flowing conversation. And um, then, so after that, I think we went back to Jeff's house. Jeff's got a beautiful house and a nice little chunk of property that I'd like to park a whole bunch of cars on. <laughs> and uh, from there, you know, I think it started, to get, it started to get late real quick. I don't know, man, like time starts to speed up when you're having an enjoyable time, right? And when you're having fun. So next thing you know, it's, it's, it's like 9.30 at night and everybody's kind of scattering. Um, and Jesse offered me a bunk, you know, a spot in his place. And even though I was really fucking tired, I wasn't 100% sure that I wasn't going to go out and do something. 
So I was like, well, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to have to, I don't, I'm not going to do that because that's, that's rude. I'm not going to be coming out in, in and out of somebody's house there trying to sleep. So I was like, well, I'm just going to take my chances on catching the hotel. Now, everybody was saying at the Haunted Day event that most of the hotels were booked out. But I was like, ah, everybody was saying that shit about Maryland and I got a hotel room with no problem, even though that was a fucking disaster. <laughs> So I went to the nearest uh, nearest hotel, which is a, a red roof, and I literally got the last room in the hotel, and uh, it was a deluxe bullshit, so I had to pay extra money, but whatever, Jake gave me a discount, so I'm happy with that. Um, so yeah, I got, I got that, and then I wound up waking up a little bit on the, uh, I woke up early as fuck, I woke up at 4.30, because I went to sleep at like 11, and normally I go to sleep at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning uh, on the weekends, and like 5 on the weekdays. Um... And so I went to sleep mat much earlier than I normally do. So I woke up much earlier than I normally do. And I just kind of like lounged around in bed, you know, because the whole day at Haunted Day, I couldn't really talk too much on the on the, on the the phone because it just, service was in and out. Like it would come and go. And um, so there was that. And then I, you know, got up and, you know, go to the gas station, grab a snack and just get ready to leave. And then I think, uh, I, think I left the hotel around like, maybe eight something and it's a half hour drive back up to the track roughly or a 40 minute drive and i got there i want to say somewhere close to nine and it was kind of empty and everybody was kind of being skeptical like oh this is gonna be a shit event there's not really much not very many people here and jeff's like well you know it's kind of kind of well, me of course i didn't personally i didn't give a shit i wasn't there for the raising excuse me well uh, you know it's like it's it's haunted it's haunted day and it's the first time they've done it and, you know, IFO was maxed when they got out there, but IFO is all imports and shit, so it's, you had a bigger crowd to, to pull from. And uh, eventually, traffic started to pick up. Uh, there's, there's probably a chance that the thumbnail I'm going to use for this is one of the pictures I took. But the crowds got big. And the crowds that came through the Nip and Racing and CSS booths got big. There was a lot of people hanging around. Um, a lot of people hanging around looking at the Pistons. A lot of people hanging around looking at the car that, uh, that Jeff had at the booth. And uh, just uh, just a lot of traffic, you know, looking around us at all the booths around us, like barely anybody came through to talk to these people. Like, I think we had the fuel injector clinic booth right next to us, and there was maybe like one or two people that came, and nobody really stopped. It was just like, you know, come in real quick and go. And, it, and you know, it's kind of, it's almost like a depressing thing, man, like to go make the effort to set up a booth and sit there and try to promote your product and have nobody stop by and visit, and, you know, it sucks. It seems like if you weren't selling t-shirts or some kind of gimmicks, then nobody really gave a shit. I think uh, even the even like the White School booth was like right across the way from us, and I, I don't really remember seeing too many people stop and go over there. And, like, everybody's <laughs> coming to different racing. <laughs> and the, the great thing about that is now because like the whole the whole deal with Trom, um, it's uh, Nippon Racing has a better connection. It's not just like we have the the choice of of budget cheap uh, cheaper cash pistons that can go up to six hundred horsepower with some of these applications, and then you have. Um, the forge plug connection too where you can go you can like a thousand horsepower off of it i think the 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 highest horsepower number i got i heard quoted that day was 1200 seems to be enough power for me so um yeah the second day the second day picked up there was a lot more fucking foot traffic coming through and uh just a little bit more exciting overall the you know i don't think i really got out and looked at cars as much but i'm not gonna lie i was ducking the sunlight hardcore because under the tent was nice and cool because the temperature wasn't that high. But man, in the sunlight, it was brutal. Um, and I think I still did manage to get a little bit of burn. But thankfully, it wasn't like Maryland where I was in the sun all day long and I got roasted. I did. I got chewed up bad by the sunlight. Okay, so uh, so anyway, yeah, kind of like, kind of, you know, we didn't really go in. Like I said, I'm a man. I'm not a female. So we didn't go too much in detail to talk about SEMA. He was just like, um, he goes, be prepared to walk around for five days and not see everything. He goes, it is, there's so much shit there. And uh, I'm like, okay, so I don't know exactly how long I'm gonna be able to be at SEMA. Like I'm still playing with vacation days and uh, a concern of mine is hotel expenses. Um, I'm not worried about the plane ticket. The, the, the flights out there and back are cheap, but um, being that it's Las Vegas, <laughs> and there's gonna be that big car event going on, I could see that uh, I could easily spend $500 or $700 in just hotel expenses uh, if I'm there for that long. So I will probably go for two or three days, uh, maybe three days because it'll be two overnights and I'll leave on the third. So I don't mind spending a couple hundred dollars for hotels, but you know, when I'm getting close to a thousand dollars on overnight stays, um, yeah, I don't think I could do that. Uh, well. I can. 
I don't think I want to do that. I don't think my wife would be too happy if I did that. She's already unhappy about me saying I'm going back up the, to the New England area just because I want to chill with somebody. <laughs> She's like, hey, you fucking asshole, what are you doing? But anyway, whatever. Fuck it. I spend all my time making money and paying bills. So, fuck, if I want to go fly somewhere to hang out with somebody, I'm going to do it. God damn it. So, anyway, um, about the <laughs> about the business now. We're going to talk about projects real quick. This is already 25 minutes deep. And I kind of feel like I'm doing the whole story injustice. It was, you know, again, great experience, great people. Very much looking forward to meeting them again forever. Like, this is, like, something I, I'm going to be making these trips, I think, regularly for, from now on. If not, if if anything, if I ever get to the point where I'm making the money that I want to make and I'm doing the things that I want to do, like with YouTube and parts and engines, then I'll probably fly out to every fucking event, you know, because why not? And then I'll be able to start including my family in, in some of them more often, especially during the summertime. And, um, and and that'll balance out her disdain for me going anywhere. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm, at, I'm at there. I'm at the dark, you know, just talking to Jesse. This is, this is day one. <laughs> He's like, it was, we're just bullshitting back and forth. And then at one point he goes, so uh, what's your next forge build you're planning on doing? I'm, this, like, I'm thinking about probably doing another B18. And, you know, I'm thinking uh, uh, probably, you know, because I have that, another LS block. And I was like, well, I was thinking about doing that. Um, but I'm not 100 percent sure yet. And he's like, "Why don't you take those pistons?" I'm like, "Take what pistons?" He's like, "Those pistons right there." I'm like, "These are their VATs." I'm like, "Okay, fuck yeah, I'm taking those pistons." I'm like, "You sure? <laughs> you sure I can I can have those? I, I can have those pistons?" Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm fucking like, I'm like, "Fuck yeah, Forge B18 is definitely coming," you know, because I have uh, I have a, a block I've been sitting on for the longest time, but I, I don't know if I'm gonna use that one. I think the block I just bought the other day that I was gonna sell, that I was kind of pushing on you guys. Yeah, I'm not gonna sell that now. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna fucking use it. And that's gonna be the next B18 build, and it'll probably be a little faster and easier, even though it's gonna be boost to get that in the car than it would be for another K. But thoughts need to be thought on that still. Um, I need to, I need to figure out what I'm gonna do there exactly. Now the order of priority will be, I'll probably do the another K first, and then go back to that. But I don't think it's gonna take too long, All right? Now and then the other pieces on top of here. Um, uh, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this because the, the, the you know the camera reverse thing. But anyway, uh, the Type R K28, K24, 88 millimeter pistons. These are the ones I was talking about getting for the the K24 the other day. And uh, how that happened was <laughs> later on in the day, it was like um, I was like he's uh, we're he's talking to a customer or talking to a guy walking through the booth, and they were talking about you know the, the pistons for the K24. And he was talking about those, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, we can we can go up to 88 millimeter on the K20." And I was like, "Damn, I didn't know you could bore over that much on the K20, and it'd be fine." And, you know, uh, he's like, "Yep." And I was like, "Well, fuck, man." I was like, "I have," a, and I'm just saying this. This is what I wasn't trying to catfish nobody or bait somebody. And I swear to God, I just making conversation. I was like, "Man, I got a K20, uh, I got a GDM K20A sitting in my backyard right now that's just rusted out real bad, and it's got you know cylinder damage that I want to bore over and use for something." Uh, I think about making another poor man's K20 E2 or make it a poor man's K20 uh, K20 R, and he's like, "Drive those pistons, bro. Take them." I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> like shit." I was like, "I didn't." I was like, "I don't." <laughs> I didn't mean for that to be like, "Give me something." I had full intentions on buying them. And he's like, "Just take them." I'm like, "Fuck yeah, okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fight you on it too hard. I mean, I feel a little bit bad about it, man. I feel like a fucking thief. I'm in here running out with shit." And, uh, but yeah, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm taking them. I was like, now I have to decide. I was like, what am I going to do? Boost? Am I going to do, you know, K24 NA like I wanted to, or K20, or do the K20 in general, or like I, like I thought? And I'm thinking too, I'm like, well, I'm like, well, the K24, because torque and everything. I was like, well, fuck that, dude. I'm born over to fucking 88 millimeter on the K20. Might as well use it anyway. And then I could use the K24 for something else like I wanted to. And now that'll give me a use to use that block instead of staying out there and continuing to rust. So I think that is going to be what I'm going to do. And I just thought about that. This morning when I woke when I woke up, I'm probably gonna do the um yeah the the K20 uh the K the JDM K20 and keep it for myself. The only drawback would be is the rods, but I don't know. Oh well, see, damn, I don't know, man. That kind of makes me think because you know I, the K20 E3 the rods would be the issue. Now the reason why it'd be an issue is because of this. Uh, I was thinking to myself, I could use the K20 block board over and use the K20 E3 rods and then use the, the K20 Z3 head and I'll have a badass engine. That'll be a badass engine right there. But then I'm thinking too, like uh, if I use the K24, the whole idea was to, to put to build the K24 up, throw it in there, straight K24, and then later on, you know, later on in the year, get a 6B tranny because right now it would just be doing it to be fast. 
get a six speed tranny and get the four piston head and then you know and then see it as the k24 versus what it looks like with the, the 4p head which is you know supposed to be making 300 horsepower with the right package uh on pump gas so yeah there's it looks like i'm still gonna have to think about that a little bit you know my my mind has been jumbled up the last couple of days and trying to process everything from the trip but um for sure I'm gonna be boring out one of the two blocks pretty soon to use those pistons and the 80 81.5 millimeter troms are definitely coming soon i would like to say in the next two months i, I feel confident and the blocks, both of these blocks will be built in the next two months. Now, uh, it's, now I don't mean two months counting June because June is booked for me right now. I gotta finish um, dude's B18 build, and that won't be till next weekend. So next weekend is that will be in the third week of the month, and I'm also gonna be finishing up uh, or starting some work on the Integra. So I'll be doing some work there. So um, yeah, this month is already covered on busyness, and it'll be next month I'll be rolling into the focusing on getting one of these two blocks done. Um, although there's a good chance I might pick one, I pick one of the blocks beforehand, pull it aside, and um, what was it? Go ahead and send it to the machine shop, and then have that done. So that way, when it comes time to start to build, I can do that. Plus, I also may want to rethink some of my bearings choice here now that I'm actually going to be doing something else with it. But I don't know. We're going to see. That's definitely for sure. I'm going to do some more stewing and thinking on that. The B18 is a little bit more easy, straightforward. I already have those scat rods, the, you know, the ones I told you that are cooked a little bit. I'm going to use those, and I'm going to push the motherfucking limits on that B18. I'm going to probably go stock sleeve and just see where I can get and then use that as another test mule, kind of like I'm going to do with the Integra, where I'm going to tune on pump, push as far as I can do it on pump, and then see what, what components start to give out, and then go maybe do some E85, and then go from there. Uh, so, yeah, man, I, you know, I, just, I feel like the way I've been treated, man, like I don't deserve the, the, the good treatment I've got, and I really feel like I have not... Man, it's been a long time since I've had somebody where I've, I've the desire to have to work for people, like, you know... I want so much to get work done and get shit out there for Jesse and Jeff. You know, I mean, I know they've got hundreds, if not thousands of people that are already out there doing their thing. But I mean, like out of all those people that have done business with them, how many of them are getting the kind of treatment that I have, you know, brought in and, and multiple times given gifts, you know, I need to start producing. Thank God I got the Integra running before I went up there to meet Jesse. So right now the goal is to have it tuned before SEMA because SEMA is the next time I should be face to face with Jesse unless something were to come up, which I doubt. So anyway, yeah, so I have until November uh, to get that car tuned. And I feel very confident that that's going to happen now, where unlike before, I was a little bit unsure. And in the meantime, also getting a long block ready for the uh, for the RSX. And I think I'll probably just swapping in the high compression, either either the K24 or the Monster K20. We're going to see which one happens, but it's going to be a stock. Uh, it's going to be just an NA uh, setup for right now, and then we'll rethink later for boost in the in the near future. So I guess that might also play a, a factor into what I'm going to do with um as regards to which block i'm going to use but i don't know I might, that might even be a separate video i talk about later also uh okay we are running extremely long now we're, we're past the half hour mark so thank thank you to people that have watched this far but i think uh one of the ones uh, one of the pistons i talked about the other day i took a picture of uh i'm going to talk about those very soon um maybe even right now i'm not 100 percent sure but um yeah we got to talk about those very soon. Like it, it shouldn't take too long to cover, but I think it's important. And some of you guys are going to be extremely happy to hear about it. All right, so that's all I can think of to talk about right now. Um, great fucking experience. It gives me a lot of hope for the more in the future. It gives me a lot of resolve to get some things done. I'm, I might even uh, uh, might even slow down on trying to get shit sold to people for the meantime just because of the fact that um, I want to focus on getting some more projects done just to get some more numbers out there. Or maybe take baby steps and just take um, well take, just do the integra for right now, because somebody hit me up the other day for a single cam long block rebuild and I I don't think I'm gonna do it now. I might not. Well, I, I might do it, but I might just do the block, you know, just to get a little bit of extra income in, um, and the block won't take me too long to to deal with. But a, a full long block, I think it might be safe to say that I'm not doing that for anybody right now, or at least not anybody in in the. Anywhere, anytime soon. I think because most people are asking for bills for me right now are from out of state, so it's easier for me to say no because like I'm only shipping short blocks. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see me doing a long block rebuild for anybody anytime soon. It's just a whole extra mess of shit, and I don't really 
there's I don't think there's any money I can charge extra to, to want to deal with it. And it's just the uh, valve seals and timing belts and all that shit. So, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I uh, got really bloated. I kind of figured this might happen. And um, talk to you all in the near future, maybe even later today. And uh, peace. Hoping for some more good shit to come in, in soon. Uh, Tulsa is next.